Well, we've actually reported on a couple of different GPS solutions here at uh, PMA, so it seems like GPS is definitely a technology that's coming for digital cameras. I didn't realize just how much it was coming, though, until I came by the NXP software booth and spoke to these folks. This is the company that's behind the technology that we saw in the Jobo GPS solution. And what's, what's unique about the technology is that it's extremely low power. It's, um, it's very fast. It wakes up, grabs the GPS data, and goes back to sleep. And in uh, talking with Paul Goff here, <coughs> who's the product marketing manager, um, I just came across a lot of really interesting information about it. I thought that for some of our more technical readers, it might be interesting to go into the details of how all this works. So, Paul, I guess you and I can just chat a little bit about um, about this. First, some background. Um, you just explained to me how NXP software came about. It was a part of Philips. That's right. Um, until October last year, uh, we were part of the Philips organization, at which point uh, Philips Semiconductors, uh, that part of the organization was sold to a private equity company. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, spun out, and then that was given a new name, a new identity, which is now NXP. It has two parts, the NXP software part and NXP semiconductors. We're part of the NXP software, part of that organization. Okay, great. So there's definitely a, um, a, a strong background of technology coming from Philips. So um, uh, I guess to start out, uh, the thing that w first struck me about the solution was I'm used to my, my home handheld GPS. It's an older unit, admittedly, but you know, I start it up and it tends, takes maybe five minutes for it to go and find all the different satellites. Uh, and, and you guys have really managed to short circuit that process entirely. So b let's just start in with a d description of what it is that you actually do there. Okay, yes. So with a traditional GPS solution, um, when you start it up, it has to listen to the satellites, it has to download data from it, and that can take 20, 30 seconds to get a position fix. So the idea of putting that into a digital camera just, it just isn't well suited because you want to take a picture and then you immediately want to go on and move on and do something else. You don't want to wait 20, 30 seconds to get a position fix. So we've sort of come up with a way of rearranging the whole processing of GPS in order to fit the way that people take photographs. Mm -hmm. And the way we've done that is that when you come to take your picture, you click the shutter, at that moment we capture just 100 milliseconds of the raw GPS data. We store that away and we do no processing whatsoever at that point. Uh, then, later on, you come to your PC, you unload all your images, and with each image you have these little packets of unprocessed GPS data. Mm -hmm. At that point on the PC, our software takes over, takes that 100 milliseconds of data, and you know, with quite a lot of computing, sort of extracts out the position fix, and so we can then geotag the actual image and show you exactly where you took the picture, uh, say on an aerial view like we have on this PC. Okay, and so the, um, what a, a normal GPS is doing is it's having to acquire the satellites, make sure it has a strong, a strong signal, it's doing some, uh, I gather, some synchronization with them, um, and uh, there's also a, a noise cancelling or a, a, a data extraction process that goes through. Now, your solution, it doesn't have to um, achieve sort of the synchronization, I guess the clock needs to be synchronized, but what I, what I found interesting is that it's not having to make these sub-nanosecond time measurements that this snapshot you can capture actually has all of the timing information embodied in it, but in a digital form somehow. Can you describe that a little bit better? Um, we still have to do a, a, a synchronization, on, on, but all that is now done on the, uh, on the, on the PC. So, yeah, initially the, the digital data is completely unprocessed. It's just a series of ones and zeros uh, that extensively looks random. Then when we go to the PC, then we start passing the codes for each of the different satellites past it, um, doing a long integration in order to bring that signal above the noise, uh, at which point then we can know exactly you know, the time from uh, the signal was sent from the satellite and was received by our device. And that's interesting. So the, the, the correlation that's done is actually done on the raw, extremely noisy digital data, not in an analog form. I'd, I'd never really known the details of GPS, but I had always assumed that this correlation was happening somehow in the analog domain. It was digitizing things and then lining them up. So actually, the the data that's captured from the satellites is this going to be extremely random looking digital format. And then uh, you say each, so each satellite has a unique code. Was yep. that, uh, you think you said, was, was that, we were talking earlier, that was the 128 bits you're referring to? Uh, it, it's uh, 1,024 bits, yeah, so, sort, of, okay. sort of long. But yes, each of them has a, has a, a, a particular code. Uh, but when you first 
pick up the data because the satellites are so far away those signals are hidden well below the noise and so we have to capture say um, say 10 or 20 of these sort of code lengths in order to integrate through them and bring them above the um, above the noise level right and so this is actually it's a it's a correlation process it's it's really like spread spectrum communications or CDMA and cell phone technology where um, you have kind of a, a random looking signal, but when you match it up with this sort of digital fingerprint from the satellite, up it pops out of the noise. It's exactly the same as CDMA, that's right. Okay, great. So that makes sense then, finally. I finally understand what it's doing. And I guess the, um, the time that a normal GPS takes to wake up, um, it, you may have not all the channels available to you, so it has to dwell on each channel to see if there's a satellite there and, and run all the codes past it to see if it's the, you know, which satellite it is. And then there's also the matter of uh, understanding where that satellite is in space and that's that's the big part of the processing that you've offloaded now to the to the computer and to your server um, uh, once you get back to the computer that's right yes so we just take this raw data and then we search for all the possible satellites there's uh, potentially 32 of those satellites and searching for them then hopefully one or two or three pop out of that and we start to get an idea of uh, you know where we are in the in the world mm -hmm. um, then we go to our server, which has got all the satellite data archived, you know, sort of going into the past, and we can download all the detailed ephemeris data for those satellites, um, ready to do then the final computation of uh, the position fix. Great. So that's, yeah, that's a really fascinating thing. So your server is actually, um, this is a really interesting example of distributed computing, that your server is going out and collecting this very detailed ephemeris data, so the local device doesn't have to worry about that anymore. And it uses the timestamp then to correlate back to a specific set of ephemeris data? Yes, so when we actually capture the uh, small packet of unprocessed data from the, uh, uh, with the camera, then we give that a timestamp and that gives us a, a basic time. It doesn't have to be that accurate, sort of a few, few minutes uh, mm -hmm. close to sort of uh, the UTC normal GPS time. Uh, but that then gives us sufficient information uh, combined with the satellite data to uh, start to do the processing to get a fix. Great. So the uh, so the ephemeris data then in the, in the server tells you you knew where all 32 satellites were all around the Earth at that point in time. Absolutely. You know more or less to within as you say a minute or two. Yeah. And so then as you start correlating and finding the which satellites were visible, that gets you you know progressively homed in on where it was. That's right. We have to search over that time space. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so and, and that's where the bulk of the actual uh, computation uh, uh, sort of sort of goes. Mm -hmm. uh, and then as we uh, home in on the solution, you know, suddenly you'll you'll find a. A very sharp correlation, and we know then that's the uh, uh, we've got the exact timing for the from from here to the satellite, the so-called pseudo ranges, and then putting that all together, we generate a position fix.